everyone as the tax season comes up we are here to tell you all that you need to know about long term capital gains so let's get started when do you need capital gain tax simple whenever you transfer a capital asset for profit but what all is exactly included in a capital asset let's find out well capital is basically any kind of property held by you be it your house land or shares but it has some exclusions as well stock and trade and movable property when we say movable property things like your vehicle furniture are excluded but there is one immovable property excluded as well that is rural agricultural land the key word here is rural if you have urban agricultural land then it is not excluded so if you transfer anything for profit other than the above exclusions be ready to pay the capital tax now that we have covered the exclusions let's cover some inclusions as well first and very important jewelry yes this might surprise you but jewelry including gold utensils are capital asset for calculating capital gain other things that include drawings paintings sculptures archaeological collections or any other work of art now that we know what's included in a capital asset let's find out when a capital asset is classified as a long term capital asset well it is different for different assets and depend on the holding period the below table shows the minimum holding period for different assets for them to classify as long term asset for example for listed equity shares and equity mutual funds it is 12 months for immovable property it is 24 months let's see how we compute long term capital gain sales consideration is the amount you sold your asset for cost of acquisition is the amount you paid to purchase your asset or construct it including things like registration charges cost of improvement is the amount you spent on making material improvements to your asset for example in the case of a house building another floor or adding another room so next time you make this expenditure don't throw the bills away any charges that you paid related to sale of assets like brokerage charges i know you are wondering about the index word in the formula don't worry we'll cover it in the later slides important point to remember is that if your capital asset is purchased before 1st april 2001 you have the option to take its fair market value on 1st april 2001 as your cost of acquisition there is no set way to calculate this value you can either use the circle rates prevailing at that time or take help of a registered valuer as promised we are going to explain the concept of indexation indexation is basically inflating the cost you paid for the capital in order to account for the rising prices the below table shows the indexation factors as notified by the government for all the years starting 1st april 2001 We don't have for years before 2001 because that's the earliest year for which indexation is allowed. To calculate index cost of acquisition, take your original cost of acquisition and multiply it with CII of sale year and divide it with the CII of the year which asset is purchased or CII of 1st April 2001, whichever is later. Here is an example to explain the above formula. Suppose you purchase your house for rupees 1 lakh in 1993. The fair market value of your house on 1st April 2001 is rupees 1 lakh 50000 and you sold it in 2017. Now your index cost of acquisition would be 1 lakh into 272 that is the CII of financial year 1718. divided by CII of 2001-2002 similarly you can calculate index cost of improvement important point to note that the concept of indexation does not apply to equity shares and equity oriented mutual funds 
we will cover how cost of acquisition is calculated for equity in the later sections. Now that we know how to calculate long term capital gain, let's cover how the tax is calculated on this gain. Well, to say it in a line, tax on long term capital gain is flat 20%. But if your total taxable income excluding LTCG is less than the income chargeable to tax, then you only need to pay capital gain tax on the portion of LTCG which exceeds the exemption limit of income not chargeable to tax. A bit confused? Let us explain with an example. Suppose you are under 60 years of age, then your exemption limit would be 2,50,000 and your total income excluding long term capital gain is rupees 3 lakh. Now in this case, since your total income excluding LTCG is greater than the exemption limit, that is rupees 2,50,000, you will have to pay capital gain tax on the full rupees 1 lakh at 20%. So your capital gain tax will be rupees 20,000. Let us consider another example. In this case as well, your long term capital gain is rupees 1 lakh. But your total income excluding long term capital gain is rupees 2 lakh 10,000. Since in this case your total income excluding LTCG is less than exemption limit that is rupees 2 lakh 50,000, you will have to pay tax only on the balance amount that is rupees 60,000 at 20%. So your capital gain tax will be rupees 12,000. Now we will cover some points specific to equity shares and equity oriented mutual funds. In case of equity shares and equity oriented mutual funds, tax is levied only if your long term capital gain exceeds rupees 1 lakh and the tax rate is 10%. Suppose you earned a long term capital gain of rupees 2 lakh, then you need to pay tax at 10% on rupees 1 lakh only, that is rupees 10,000. Now, how to calculate cost of acquisition for equity shares and equity oriented mutual funds? In case your equity share or mutual fund is purchased after 1st Feb 2018, your purchase price would be your cost of acquisition. But if you purchase the share or mutual fund before 1st Feb 2018, your cost of acquisition would be higher of the actual cost of purchase and lower of fair market values on 31st Jan 2018 and the sale price. Let us consider an example. Suppose you purchase equity shares on 1st June 2017 for Rs 5 lakh. The fair market value of these shares is Rs 6 lakh on 1st Feb 2018 and you sold these shares on 10 July 2020 for Rs 8 lakh. Then your cost of acquisition will be higher of COA that is Rs 5 lakh, lower of fair market value on 31 Jan 2018 that is Rs 6 lakh, sales consideration received that is Rs 8 lakh. So your cost of acquisition will be Rs 6 lakh and your long term capital gain will be Rs 8 lakh minus Rs 6 lakh that is Rs 2 lakhs. Tax on long term capital gain will be 1 lakh into 10% that is rupees 10,000. I hope that clears it up. We will follow up with another video on how to save long term capital gain tax soon. So stay tuned. Please like, subscribe and share. Do let us know if you want us to make videos on any specific topic in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.